So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction, man. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute, right? So check this out, right? I find myself more often than not here lately. You know what I'm saying? Am I getting older? Maybe that's it. I don't know. But I find myself saying, man, what is this world coming to? Like, I'm losing the urge to want to go out and, 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 you know what I mean, be out and about so much with everything that's going on. I'm losing that urge a lot. I, I'd rather be in the house chilling with the family. You know what I'm saying? But imagine yourself doing your part, right? Doing your part to try to help the planet. You know what I'm saying? Doing your part to keep it clean, everything. And you get hit with a fine. No, 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 no. Read, listen, listen to the title first, first before you. You know what I mean? Look, you probably you read the title to click on it, but let me let me say it to you. They got fined for cleaning up a river. Now, I'm I'm trying not to jump out the window just yet. You know what I mean? Because I ain't seen the video, but just based off the title alone, help me. Why? Why somebody need to get catch a fine for cleaning up a river? Something that most people ain't willing to get out of their bed and do. So when you do have somebody that's willing to do it, you should, I don't know, encourage, support, salute them. Thank you. So we're going to check this video out, man. Shout outs to Audit the Audit for the video. If you new, hit the subscribe button, join the fam. Let's check this out. Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers military installations, federal jurisdiction, and recreation permits, and is brought to us by Outdoors Weekly's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. Did you know that online services, like booking airline tickets and hotel rooms, charge you based on your location? This is known as price discrimination, and nearly every digital service gotcha, here we go. when you use code audit with 24-hour customer service and a in your exclusive offer now there we go Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. In a video posted on June 24th, 2022, self-identified treasure hunter and YouTuber Bryce Noctway and two of his friends decided to go magnet fishing from a bridge located in the Fort Stewart military installation in Hinesville, Georgia. The trio pulled many objects out of the water, including more than 86 test rockets, a tank tracer round, and multiple <laughs> ammo belts. Due to the dangerous nature of the objects they found, Mr. Noctway and his friends called the bomb squad to request they be safely disposed of and the bomb squad told them to call 911. After they called 911, several military police officers responded to the call and arrived at the bridge. Yeah, man. Never had the military police before. I got IDs for them. Uh, mine's in my car. Yeah, all right. You need all of ours? Yes, please. All right. These rockets were in that bag. The majority of them were. Okay. The, yeah. A lot of them had fell out. Um, that kind of creeped me out, though, with them um, test rockets being in that... Bump creep me out. I'd have been gone. The the phone call nine one one would have got from me would have been like, "Yo, we found some stuff. It's still there. I'm trying to get as far away from it as possible." Where you at, sir? By now, I'm three states over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Delta Airlines back. Yeah, I don't like that. So let's fucking go ahead and back away from that, Jody. Hey, man. How you doing, sir? Awesome. Nothing much, man. So you guys found some ammunition? Yeah, it's. Up there. A little more than ammunition. 873 uh, practice rockets. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like 86 <laughs> of them. Eight, yeah, 86 of them. <laughs> Just laying on the side of the road? No, no they were. The river. His response alone let me know that three states over, it might not be enough. Maybe I need to go six states over. They're in a, in a duffel bag in the river. Is it look like it's been been there for a while? Yeah, it's been there for a little bit. I mean, you can't play with that crap. Yeah. Oh, hell no. If we were to take one of those it's, and get caught with it, it's 10 years in prison. I've never been to a call like this, so I, I got to say, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what I'm going to have y'all do and fill out real quick, it's just, it's called an F5. It's just basic, you're not in trouble or anything, it's just basic information and yeah. everything, like name, social. Sure. You're good. 
Like good stuff. This is probably the craziest thing we've ever found. Yeah, I wonder how many officers we're gonna get out here today. There's another one. Really? Yep. Okay, that's game order. Is it? All right. Oh dang. What's up, man? How y'all doing? Good. Not too good, right? Oh, oh we doing great, man. man. <laughs> no damn office. Here's the good news. The good news is you're not going to jail, as far as I know, so far. Hey. The bad news is y'all getting tickets, man. We getting tickets? Yeah. Cause uh, anybody got four Stewart permits? For, for, for what? For doing anything. For leaving the highway. To leave the highway? Where, where'd you guys do this magnet fishing at? Right there. Right there on the bridge, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you get into the river down there, that's Fort Stewart, okay? Game Warden Lieutenant Holman arrives on the scene. <laughs> Man, this is hell. I swear so much stuff that I just don't know <laughs> that you find out every single day, right? Like, to go outside and breathe pretty soon, We'll probably end up getting you in some trouble if you don't breathe the right way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know at this point if I'm coming or going. Goodness. And informs Mr. Knoxway and his friends that they're going to receive tickets for magnet fishing on Fort Stewart property. Fort Stewart is a U.S. military installation, which mm -hmm. the Department of Defense defines as a, quote, military base, camp, post, station, yard, center, home port facility for any ship or other activity under the jurisdiction of the Department of Defense, including lease space that is controlled by or primarily supports DOD's activities. According to its 2018 base structure report, the Department of Defense manages a global real property portfolio that consists of approximately 26.9 million acres, which includes over 585,000 facilities in 4,775 sites worldwide. The DoD owns and operates property in all 50 states, as well as eight U.S. territories and 45 foreign countries. Fort Stewart is the largest army installation east of the Mississippi River, covering 279,270 acres in six different counties. Fort Stewart also serves as an army garrison, which is a community for soldiers and their families that provide many of the services that would be available in any small city. As of the date of this episode, the United States Army Installation Management Command, which is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of army installations around the globe, identifies 72 different army garrisons as currently operating in the United States. The April 2020 census reported that Fort Stewart had an estimated population of 8,821 people, and in total, Fort Stewart and the nearby Hunter Army Airfield serve about 22,310 soldiers, 42,957 family members, 4,500 civilians, and 19,000 retirees, as well as National Guard soldiers. We will discuss the legal implications of the fact that Mr. Noctway and his companions chose to magnet fish on Fort Stewart property later in this episode, but for now, it's important to remember that this interaction takes place on U.S. military property. First off, you can't fish from the bridge. You can't hold up. You're magnet fishing, right? So We're cleaning trash out of here's what I'm saying. No, no you're magnet fishing. So you can't magnet fish from a dam on Fort Stewart. Okay. You got to have a permit to even be out here doing anything. Okay. So and then this is a closed area right here. I didn't see any signs. Then then, then I got to put signs, man. You're on you're on army base. So if you weren't fishing from the highway, there's no pond right here in the middle of the highway, right? So anyway, we didn't I need, know that one because it did say no fishing up okay. there. That's here's what I'm gonna tell you. You all getting tickets, you can come to court and talk to a judge, okay? okay. Let me hey, what's wrong with him, bro? What is wrong with everybody th these days? Like, he came out there with, like, he was, hey, you know what I mean? The good news is, you're not going to jail. The bad news is, you're getting fines. Like, he, like he just got off the phone with somebody that got him all frustrated, and now he want to take his frustrations out on, on them. Are you serious? How about the rockets or whatever they found down there? And not only that, how about what else is in that, that river that we don't know about? Isn't that the more important thing than this little measly fine? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm just being different. Maybe I'm different. Let me get your uh, driver's license. Everybody okay. I need to drive. Got them all? Okay. The greens are safe. Okay, so let me just explain. So. You're on public highway here, okay? Public highway is public highway. In order to do anything other than be on this public highway, which doesn't include anything else other than driving, um, got to have a permit, okay? A permit would be from range control to come out here and do whatever. The reason magnet fishing is not allowed is because of exactly what y'all got right there, okay? You're pulling up tank rounds and all this different. 
you don't know what's going to blow up and what's not going to blow up. Okay, so what's the reason for y'all doing that? Cleaning up the water. I mean, I, that's not. It's, and then at the same time, why am I starting to feel like now it's something down there that y'all don't want us to know about? That's that's the feeling I'm getting right now, right about now. Anybody else feel like that? Yeah. Well, it's the wrong place to be doing river cleanup. Pay the ticket. Or the other alternative would be to go to jail for uh, you guys acquiring army property. So I, I understand you called and all that, but okay, that's like robbing a bank and then calling the police or or saying, hey, I just found 10 pounds of marijuana. Okay, y'all have been better off just leaving that down there. Mr. Noxway and his friends explained that they called the Georgia Department of Natural Resources to ask if they could magnet fish from the bridge and were told that it was legal to do so as long as they were in a so-called green zone. In response, Lieutenant Holman informs them that red zones and green zones are irrelevant because they're on Fort Stewart property. In general, the Department of Natural Resources has statewide statutory authority over the management and protection of Georgia's natural and cultural resources. However, because Fort Stewart is owned by the federal government, the DNR does not have authority over the garrison's property. On some military installations, the state and federal governments maintain what is known as concurrent legislative jurisdiction. As Army Regulation 405-20 explains, quote, This term is applied in those instances wherein, in granting to the United States authority which would otherwise amount to exclusive legislative jurisdiction over an area, the state concerned has reserved to itself the right to exercise, concurrently with the United States, all of the same authority. However, Georgia granted the federal government exclusive legislative jurisdiction over Fort Stewart in section 50-2-23 of the Georgia Code, which states that, quote, exclusive jurisdiction in and over any lands acquired by the United States is ceded to the United States for all purposes except service upon such lands of all civil and criminal process of the courts of this state. The state retains its civil and criminal jurisdiction over persons and citizens in the ceded territory except as to any ceded territory owned by the United States and used by the Department of Defense. According to Army Regulation 405-20, exclusive legislative jurisdiction applies when, quote, the federal government possesses, by whatever method acquired, all of the authority of the state, and in which the state concerned has not reserved to itself the right to exercise any of the authority concurrently with the United States, except the right to serve civil or criminal process in the area relative to activities which occurred outside the area. The regulation also clarifies that, quote, only Congress has the authority to legislate for areas held under exclusive legislative jurisdiction, and the federal government has the responsibility for law enforcement. The state cannot enforce its laws and regulations in such areas, except as to the service of civil or criminal process. For this reason, the Georgia Office of the Attorney General issued an unofficial opinion in 1994 that concluded that, quote, because Fort Stewart remains in the exclusive jurisdiction of the federal government, and because there is no federal statute or other agreement on point, the state has not and cannot extend its jurisdiction over the military reservation. Therefore, while the Georgia Department of Natural Resources may have accurately explained its policy on where magnet fishing is allowed to Mr. Knoxway and his friends, the DNR's regulations are not necessarily relevant on Fort Stewart property. While you're writing your report, if you would please put it in there. I know you say it's irrelevant, but I would like it in the report that there are bridges with no fishing signs. Okay, it's not this a report, it's a ticket. Okay, and I'm going to put who, what, why, when, where. Your opinion is if you want to come to court, that's for you to say to a judge, okay? It's not for me, it's not for you to dictate for me to write in a report. First off, I'm not writing a report. I'm saying I only write a report if you're under arrest. I'm not hostile at all. Oh, I thought you were debating. What is up with dude? What, what is up with the KFC dude? Uh, what's up with the colonel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what is wrong with him, man? And then we disturb him from frying his chicken. Yeah, I mean, he had orders to fill. What's going on with the colonel? It's just weird. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, like, that's what we get for doing the right thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we should have known. Literally. I, I didn't even know that was like uh, against the rules. There's nothing posted. I mean, that's literally why we didn't go to other bridges because they have signs saying no fishing, you know, whatever. And this we're not didn't fishing. Have anything like that. Yeah, we're trying to do a good thing here, clean up the rivers, that sort of stuff. As soon as we found something, we're like, yeah, we got to report this immediately. No, you guys did the right thing. Hey, y'all civilians, come on back here. Three tickets each. One of them's an $80 ticket. The other two are 130 bucks each. So what, are, what are they for? Are you going to explain it when we're all together? Yeah, well, I mean, it's on the ticket. That's all self-explanatory. No Fort Stewart permits the one. Enter a closed area. As soon as that, as soon as that magnetic went in the water, that's enter a closed area. Gotcha. And the other thing is um, magnet fishing is not allowed on Fort Stewart whatsoever. 
by anybody. Feed me. So, for, yeah, for I, that reason. Yeah, I do have one question. Yeah. If it, now, if, I know when you said if the, uh, the magnet enters a closed zone, now is closed defined as what was read is what he saw on the map? That has nothing to do with anything. The Army closes areas down, and if you guys had a permit, like to hunt and fish out here or to do sporting things, yeah. you would know that that's a closed area. Lieutenant Holman informs Mr. Noctway and his friends that they will each be receiving three tickets. One for not having a recreation permit, one for entering a closed area, and one for magnet fishing. It seems that all three of these tickets stem from violations of the Fort Stewart Hunter Army Airfield Hunting, Fishing, and Outdoor Recreational Use Standard Operating Procedures, or SOP. According to Section 3-5 of the SOP, quote, all recreational metal detecting is prohibited on Fort Stewart, including the use of an electronic metal detector and magnet fishing. Additionally, Section 1-6 requires that, quote, any person requesting permission to pursue recreational activities on this installation must obtain an installation outdoor recreation, hunting, fishing, or combo permit. Finally, Section 1-7 of the SOP explains that, quote, the possession of the appropriate permit grants the holder permission to pursue recreational activities on the installation. However, it does not guarantee or authorize access to all areas of the installation. The permit does not constitute a guarantee of access on any or all days, because all or parts of the installation may be closed for training, safety, management activities, or security reasons, or all available hunting or fishing areas may be filled at the time access is requested. As we discussed earlier in this episode, because the federal government has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over the installation, Georgia law is not necessarily relevant. However, Section 1-4 of the SOP states that, quote, hunting, fishing, and other outdoor recreation within this installation will be in accordance with applicable federal and state laws, this SOP, and the Integrated Natural Resources Management Plan. In the event of a conflict between Georgia laws and this SOP, this SOP will prevail. The same section also explains that, quote, This SOP, as well as federal and Georgia hunting, fishing, and trapping laws, will be enforced by federal and deputy federal law enforcement officers. And clarifies that, quote, This SOP is punitive in nature. Military violators of these provisions may be prosecuted under the Uniform Code of Military Justice or may be subject to administrative action. Civilian violators may be subject to administrative action, may be barred from the installation, or prosecuted under federal law or Georgia law in U.S. federal court. Based on the terms of the SOP, it appears that Mr. Noctway and his friends had violated several restrictions by magnet fishing in a closed area without a permit, and that Lieutenant Holman was well within his authority to issue them citations for these infractions. There's no way that I'm going to not come out here and not and not write a ticket. It doesn't matter if you're the damn mayor of Hinesville, you're getting a ticket. When is the court date? 9 September 22 at 9 a.m. Federal District Courthouse, North Main Street, Statesboro, Georgia, okay? I'm gonna have on the back of the tickets, y'all were cooperative, because obviously y'all called, okay? So y'all were cooperative, polite, all that good stuff, no attitudes, all that, that does help you out if you come to court, okay? Don't come to court with any kind of attitude, arguing with a judge, because that just gets you a higher price to, to pay, okay? No, I don't, I, you, got, you guys are decent people, man. You're not, though, you know what I'm saying? Golly, it. It's crazy that he would say this at the end. Granted, okay, they were in the wrong. Cool. You know what I mean? The way you just went about it and just, ah, it just, it just made me want to put them in the right. For some reason, just, just, you know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is. You got to do better research when you're doing this type of stuff, even though you are cleaning up or, or trying to, you know what I mean? Do your part or whatever it is you're out there doing. You, got, you do got to do your due, due diligence. That's a fact. My issue was just with him, the way he came out there, man. You know what I mean? But I just need you to sign this where it says defendant signature. It's not an admission of guilt. It just means you acknowledge the fact you've got to pay the ticket or come for it. Huh? After Lieutenant Holman issued three tickets to each of the magnet fishers, he informed them that they were free to leave. Mr. Noxway and his friends left the scene without further incident, and they all have federal court dates scheduled in Georgia on September 9th, 2022. Overall, Lieutenant Holman gets a B-, minus because although he was within his authority to issue tickets to Mr. Noxway and his friends, he maintained a hostile and negative attitude throughout the encounter and refuse agreed i agree with that <laughs> you know what i mean just his whole tone that's why a lot of things go left if 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 police officers game wardens whoever realize how they handle a situation could probably stop things from going left we'd be better off and a lot less situations would happen with this could you know what i mean it, it's just his whole energy vibe 
Wrong. I hated it. Didn't like it. Ugh. Disgusting. He used to exercise his discretion as a law enforcement officer when a warning may have been a more appropriate course of action than issuing citations. It is clear from the beginning of the interaction that the Magnet Fishing Trio did not intend to break the law, and even made a good faith effort to confirm that their actions were legal before beginning to magnet fish from the bridge. Although the information they received was incorrect, Lieutenant Holman expressed no interest in a- I was about to say, he didn't take that into account at all. At all. They attempted to do the right thing by calling. But you calling, getting bad information from somebody ends up getting you in trouble. Understanding the Magnet Fisher's perspective or their intentions. At one point in the encounter, Lieutenant Holman even went so far as to say that if he's called out to a location, he's always going to write a ticket. This mindset not only demonstrates a complete lack of empathy, but also serves to perpetuate the negative opinions of law enforcement often held by the general public, even among law-abiding citizens. Had Lieutenant Holman chosen to exercise his discretion by issuing a warning instead of citations, or even writing each Magnet Fisher a single ticket instead of three, the situation would have been much more positive for everyone while still achieving the goal of informing Mr. Noctway and his friends that their conduct was dangerous and illegal. Mr. Noctway and his fellow magnet fishers get an A-, minus because although they did illegally engage in magnet fishing on Fort Stewart property, they remained polite and respectful throughout the encounter, diligently reported the dangerous items that they found in order to ensure they were disposed of properly, and made a good faith effort to determine if they could legally magnet fish from the bridge. While they ultimately contacted the wrong authority for information about where magnet fishing is legal, it is perfectly understandable that these young men were not well versed in the complex and confusing system of laws about federal jurisdiction on army installations. But the fact that they weren't well versed was them attempting to call and obtain information to make sure they were properly informed to do so. You know what I mean? That's where, you know, they should be able to take that those tickets to where they called and them fix it you know what i mean they should be able to do that but it it just sucks for them it's something they'll probably have to just you know i hope this doesn't put a bad taste in their, their mouth for wanting to clean up a river you know they continue to do so now they have the information they need and they know they just have to do a little bit more gathering of information and probably consult in multiple places to get the right answer. And their reliance on the Georgia Department of Natural Resources guidance was completely reasonable under the circumstances. I commend Mr. Noctway and his friends for contacting the authorities to ensure that the items they found were safely removed, and it is unfortunate that they were punished for making this responsible decision. However, I hope that the Magnet Fishers learn from this experience and avoid military installations on future adventures unless they've cleared their activities with the appropriate federal authorities. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss us in the comments below thank you for watching i hope they're allowed to use like the video in court if they go to if they choose to go to court you know what i mean hopefully if they go to court it gets thrown out and and you know they learn something and then they also can help maybe force the military to put you know force do to put more signs out there to make it known more evident and also you know be able to 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 get the, the information out there better. I, I mean, this is the first time I've ever heard of that type of magnet fishing. Never heard of that before, have y'all? That was totally new to me, but seeing what they pulled out of that river, something I don't too much care to learn any more about. You know what I mean? It stays right here in this video for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool on magnet fishing, yeah. But uh, y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what you think, and uh, stick around and stay tuned. Till the next one, I'm gone. Peace.